Hello, this is the first part of the video series Radio Controlled Helicopters, Aerodynamics, Technology, Simulation. The video series is a joint project of the helicopter simulator HeliX and the magazine RC Heli Action. This video series has two goals. First, the aerodynamics and the technology of radio controlled helicopters shall be explained. For the visualization of the examples, we use the helicopter simulator HeliX. Using this simulator, particular effects can be made visible more easily. For example, you can see not only the helicopter, but also the stick movements of the controller, the rotational speed of the main rotor, the stall situation of the rotor blades, and so on. A second goal of this video series is to demonstrate how realistic the simulation engine of HeliX works. In this first video, we consider the lift of the main rotor. When the helicopter hovers in a sufficient height, the lift is created by accelerating the surrounding air, the so-called downwash. An increase of the angle of attack of the blades increases the lift created by the main rotor. That means, a large angle of the blades causes a climb, smaller or even negative angles let the helicopter come down. And with a particular angle of attack, the helicopter hovers with a constant height. Completely different is the situation when the helicopter is near the ground. The air cannot flow downwards, but will produce a kind of air cushion where the helicopter hovers on. We say the helicopter is inside the ground effect. The increase of lift is larger when the height of the helicopter is less. The ground effect is effective up to a height, which is approximately the diameter of the main rotor. When hovering in the ground effect, the angle of attack at the blades act differently than in the free stream situation. Now, the angle does not influence the vertical speed, but the stable hover height in the ground effect. For higher hover heights, a greater angle is needed. This behavior shall now be demonstrated in an example. In the left upper corner you can see the stick display of HeliX. We use mode 2. With the left stick we control the collective angle with positive and negative pitch. The right stick controls the cyclic. Either run to the right and left and elevator four and back. So the right stick is similar to the cyclic control stick in a real size helicopter. The left stick controls in addition the rudder to the right and left, that is the rotation around the vertical axis of the helicopter. We now start the rotor, first idle up one and then idle up two with a higher rotor speed. The green bar at the right indicates the rotation speed of the main rotor. First we try to hover with a small collective angle within the ground effect. By the way, I use the autopilot of HeliX, I only control the collective. When we increase the angle of the blades with the collective, the helicopter climbs and reaches a stable height which is now a little bit larger. With even more collective pitch, the helicopter climbs with a constant vertical speed and leaves the ground effect. We reduce the collective pitch angle. The helicopter descends with a constant pitch angle, but when the helicopter is sufficiently low inside the ground effect, it flares until it hovers again in a stable height. So you can clearly recognize the increase of lift inside the ground effect. Next, we study the helicopter in forward flight. You can imagine now that the rotor disc acts as a wing. The higher the horizontal speed is, the larger is the additional lift generated by the rotor disc. In fact, the situation is more complicated in reality, but we want to keep our explanations as simple as possible. This effect is also called translational lift. As an example, we observe the Logo 600 from Mikado. The collective pitch is chosen in such a way that the helicopter hovers inside the ground effect at a stable height. We can clearly see now. As soon as the helicopter has a horizontal speed, 
the lift increases and the helicopter starts to climb. Note that the collective pitch is constant during the whole experiment. As soon as the horizontal speed decreases, the lift is automatically reduced and the helicopter starts to descend. It reduces its height until the stable hover height inside the ground effect is reached. Still, the collective pitch angle is not changed. Observe the descent of the helicopter until it reaches a stable hover height inside the ground effect. So, a helicopter needs less thrust as long as it hovers inside the ground effect or when it is in a forward flight. This explains how a normal start procedure of a real-size helicopter is performed. They start to hover in the ground effect accelerate the horizontal speed inside the ground effect and then start to climb when a sufficient speed is reached. This is the most economic method to start for a helicopter. In fact, some smaller helicopters with only small engines have to start in this way. Next, we come to an effect which arises both for real-size helicopters and model helicopters. It is the nose-up tendency during forward flight. When the helicopter is in forward flight, the rotor blades, which move to the front, feel a higher airspeed than the blades on the other side. Thus, the lift on the left-hand side is higher. There is a phase shift of the effectiveness of the lift, so it produces a torque which tries to move the nose up of the helicopter. To compensate this effect, there are different methods depending on the kind of the rotor system of the helicopter. We start with a scale helicopter where the situation is similar to real size helicopters. The pilot has to compensate the nose up tendency by moving the cyclic stick to the front. You can see this in the video. The cyclic stick, the right stick here, is moved forward to compensate the nose up tendency. The classic model helicopter has pedals. Here the situation is so that the air from the front causes the pedal plane to tilt to the front. Since the pedals are coupled to the cyclic pitch of the main rotor blades, this change of the angle of the pedal plane causes the automatic control of cyclic pitch to the front. This compensates then the tendency of the helicopter to put its nose upwards. In order that this mechanism works well, Two things are important. First, the pedals should be oriented completely horizontal. If the pedals had a positive pitch by themselves, the tilt direction was in the upper side direction, which would then increase the nose up tendency. Second, the translation ratio between the angle of the pedal plane on the cyclic pitch has to be adjusted well, which is usually done by the helicopter manufacturer. In HeliX, the dynamic behavior of the pedals is completely implemented and simulated accurately. In this video, you can see the pedal version of the T-Rex 600. Note that there is no need to control the cyclic pitch to compensate the nose up tendency during the fast forward flight. It is automatically compensated by the pedal mechanism. When you try this by yourself, Look at the status line of Haley X. There you can see that the cyclic nick angle is automatically controlled. The most modern method now is the use of a three axis stabilization system. They work in such a way that the rotation speed of the helicopter is measured and the control system compensates the nose up tendency. You can see this here with the Logo 600 with a stabilization system. You can see that no cyclic input is necessary during the fast forward flight. Again, you can observe this automatic compensation with cyclic nick in the status line of Heli X. Now we are at the end of the first part of the video series Ready Controlled Helicopters, Aerodynamics, Technology, Simulation. 
I'm glad if you found some interesting parts and could increase your understanding of model helicopters. You can download the simulator HeliX from our website. The demo version is fully functional with five helicopters and two flying sites, so you can fly and test by yourself. Probably we fly together in one of the multiplayer sessions of HeliX. I wish you the best and happy landings!